And all three of these witnesses, the Bible says in verse 8, agree in one. So we know that out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. But it doesn't say these three witnesses are essentially 100% uh, one, like verse 7 says, these three are one, one and the same. It says these three agree in one. I think what that's pointing to is the idea, some people will say, well, I have two or three witnesses and we all say this, therefore you're guilty. It's true. But we know from the court of law system that if three witnesses come together and they have the exact same events, the exact same story, they are one, that their witness is automatically thrown away because they, they must have gotten together and agreed upon in that story. But what it says and what it means, I believe, when it says that the spirit, the water, and the blood all agree in one is that their witness, though there is a different perspective, though there is a different aspect, though there is a different idea, a different type of salvation being shown, of the true life or the true God and eternal life being shown, they all essentially in their own way describe that same perfect. Uh, sacrifice, the same perfect idea in completion. They agree in one, though they might tell the story a little bit differently. The spirit testifying of the spiritual man, the rebirth, the water talking about the cleansing, the blood talking about sin and its harm and its hurt. They are in their fullness the whole, but they all tell it from a different perspective. It's the same reason why we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. If those three gospel writers were to come out and essentially have a carbon copy of the same stories and they didn't tell them a little bit different or from a different perspective or have different wording, then we could throw them out as if they all wrote them in the exact same route and agreed upon them and their witness was tainted by the fact that they worked together in creation of it. But we see that the witness, not only in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalm, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Psalm, Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Isaiah, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, all prophesy of the same truth. They all bear witness to the same Christ, and yet they do it in a little bit of a different fashion, in a little bit of a different perspective. And in the same way as the Spirit and the water and the blood all agree in one, so do all of the testimonies of Scripture. Right. Whether you're talking about the Old Testament, or whether you're talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Letter of the Romans, and on and on and on and on. They all prophesy of that same truth in a little bit different way, though they agree in one. And because they prophesy, because they tell the old, old story in the same way, yet in a different perspective, we can trust and we can count on and we can believe upon those witnesses to be true because without contradicting one another, they enforce the same truth. And the truth is this. This is the true God and eternal life. And they all charge you to keep yourself from idols, keep yourself from a, a false idea of the same 